dirt roads to rock crawling, two buck chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, episode 40. 40? No way. No way. We're we're officially over the hill. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Middle-aged. Here we are back in the home studio. Uh, Lorenzo's propped up. I had to dust him off a little bit with the air hose. But he's here. You're here, Chris. I am. I don't want to be here, but I'm here. There's places I'd rather be. You know what? I, I, it was a wonderful trip, and uh, I, I would go back tomorrow if I could, but uh, it's nice to be home, too. It is. It's time to recharge and, and kind of refresh and get back to reality, yeah, unfortunately. Reality. Yeah, and that's, uh, I'm, I still haven't, haven't done enough laundry yet, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be blowing dust out of things for weeks. I would say 70% of my stuff is unpacked and cleaned, so I I feel pretty good. You've been busy. I have been busy, and there's a lot of dirt I've been washing down the the, the driveway and stuff. Holy Uh, smokes. Yeah. All memories just washing down the drain. (laughs) The only things I've done is I clean the trailer inside and out. I cleaned the trailer inside and out so I could return the trailer to to, to Ed. And uh, Craig and I cleaned the exterior of the camper, and then I unloaded it. And uh, the inside still has to be dealt with. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I haven't cleaned the inside of mine yet. I mean, I just, I, I'm just going to have to go in there with a shop vac and just suck everything. Pretty much. It's just whatever. Yeah, but, I'm thinking about getting a steam cleaner. Oosh. Yeah, just that's, give it a full, full douche. That's more motivation than I can muster. <laughs> Get it ready for spring here. Do a little spring cleaning. Right, right. Anyways, here we are. But uh, where did we leave off? We were on the lake bed. Very happy. It was Friday morning-ish. Yeah, the race was going on. The 4400 boys were out racing. It, uh, we, did, we didn't have any real good updates on what was going on. No. But uh, the race was in full swing when we were recording. Yes. And... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, kind of where we can pick up, I guess, is uh, what happened? What happened what, with that race? <laughs> what, what happened? Yeah, I'll tell you. There was a, a lot going on. Um, it, it, you know, that's the one only only bad thing, I guess you could say, uh, uh, about being a, on, at the Hammers is it's hard to keep up. There's the YB Racing app, you know, where you can right. see where drivers are, but... It doesn't tell you who's in first, second, third. No, you know, and of course, if you're you're planted in front of the jumbo jumbotrons, like your best thing because right. you can you can stay up to date and, and hear the announcers and stuff. But they really need to broadcast that out to the lake bed. They uh, do via FM radio or something. Right. I mean, and you know, Dave people Cole radio. Like, oh, you can do it with the internet. Well, the internet gets so saturated. No, there's no out way. There. It just doesn't no. work. Even in the media tent, the, the yeah. internet was going down. Yeah. So. Um, I agree. You know, FM doing an FM broadcast, low power FM broadcast yeah, race on the race days something. would be would be important. But uh, you know, but it, it is it's second to none being out there and just getting to hear the engines live, <laughs> smell. Oh yeah, the engines. Uh, you know, you get hammer lung with all the dust. They call it hammer lung. It's an actual uh, really? diagnostic. Yeah, that that doctors are using now. Really? Uh, yeah, you look it up. It's in the doctor's manuals now. Hammer lung. Hammer along. Yeah. Um, but, uh, hey, let's let's circle back to uh, Thursday's results. We, we With the lack of, oh, right. you know, uh, our, our media, social media being down. Um, but Bryce Minzy. Right. Minzy's, uh, he won the T1 race and the $100,000 paycheck. Toyo driver, Bryce Menzies. Yes. Yeah. So uh, second was uh, Luke uh, McMillan. Correct. And then uh, third was BJ Baldwin. But really, there was no second or third no. because there was one paycheck. Winner take all. A winner take all. And uh, I, I kept, I heard this a few times that it cost them roughly 60 grand. I heard that. To unload that truck <laughs> and, and start it up to, to race a race. So. 
you know, congratulations on your 40000 plus Uncle Sam's going to take his cut. So they basically, uh, Bryce Menzies broke even, broke even. Uh, for the, for the, uh, the T1 food, race. That's the food and drink for the crew. It, yeah. <laughs> um, but, man, so cool watching those things out in the desert. Uh, oh, yeah. Incredible piece of machinery. But um, They haul ass. Yeah. So back to Friday and the, the big race going on and so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, and it, it seemed to finish earlier this year. I mean, it was like we were starting to pack up, unfortunately. Yeah. Get, get everything kind of broken down and start loading up and, and consolidating and getting ready for our, our Saturday departure. Right. Uh, it was a beautiful day. It was a great day. Yeah. And um, and then next thing I know, you and Tyler and Mike and... CJ and Andy are like, okay, we're heading into Hammertown. The leaders are coming in. I'm like, what? It was it's like, like two thirty, not even. Not, well, what do you mean? The leaders are coming in. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it was. It was. Uh, they were starting to roll in, and um, we were right there with uh, with our media vest. That's right. And it Greatest was thing ever. Right by the start finish line, and it was so cool watching them come through and. Uh, Josh Blyler, yeah, congratulations! Your forty four hundred class uh, winner, In the first place, first king, place, king of the hammers. Yeah, and then Eric Miller, yeah, second place, right? Another solid axle car, right? <laughs> Didn't somebody predict? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's the rocks, man. It is. It's amazing. So you got two solid axle cars that that finished first and second. <laughs> Josh Blyler. Eric Miller, and then good old Marcos Gomez finishing third. Now, that definitely is not a solid action no, car. That is uh, uh, a, a f- unique car in itself. Full-fledged rear engine uh, IFS. Yes. And um, so that was super cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw on the uh, – it was hitting the uh, the interwebs there. Um uh, Miles stuck the wrench in on him at one of the pits. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hey, how's it going out there? He goes, we're going to freaking rent this thing. You know, he was all fired up. Right. And he, of course, they all were fired up when they crossed that finish line. So. Sure, no doubt. And then and then fourth place, Bailey Cole. Bailey Cole. Bailey Cole in a car that he's only driven in the rocks up Chocolate Thunder once earlier that week. That right. was it. IFS car, brand new to him. Brand new. Uh-huh. He, he, he does I mean, the... Uh, uh, older car, but brand new to him. Well, yeah, and they did a lot of work to it. Sure, And yeah. uh, hashtag Flappy Bird is what uh, he calls, <laughs> calls those <laughs> IFS cars. I love that. So, um, yeah, uh, Tyler and I got to interview him, and uh, we're going to re-air that uh, interview on uh, on our podcast. Absolutely. Uh, it was great. He was uh, just cool, cool kid. Uh, got his whole whole life ahead of him, and he's uh, he's already making a name for himself. It's, I, it's great. I saw him uh, on the Instagram this morning. He said, uh, "Yeah, I'm up to my eyeballs and studying for school." And <laughs> yeah, and he's like, uh, "Koh withdrawals a real thing or whatever." Oh, Some, something yeah, along those lines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's hard <clears throat> enough for us just to go back to work, and he's got to go back to school. Yeah. I, yeah. no, I don't envy that man sitting sitting there listening to the teachers and uh, droning on. Oh. Bueller, notes. Bueller, studying for <laughs> tests, pop quizzes. They still do pop quizzes. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I everybody, don't want, everybody I don't want to gets a it. trophy. I got it. I just a <laughs> trophy. I don't know. I'm just glad I got that piece of paper up on my wall, and uh, there it is. Where? So it's in my bedroom because uh, it, I don't dream or have nightmares very often. But uh, it, when I do have a nightmare, it's because I'm failing some class in oh, college. Geez. And uh, I can wake up, and then there's the there's the piece of paper, the document to say a, that I have a like a light on that it that I can learn. Uh, no, there's still a light. Uh, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, yo, Adrian, yo. So, so, anyways, um, so Bailey Gold was fourth, and then we got to mention uh, fifth place to John Webb. Yeah, these these are the guys that have the stereo cranking the whole time. That's right. right. Instead of lights on top of their car, they got four speakers, and it's it's freaking. They're awesome. Like they're North Cowboys. It's about the tunes, man. Yeah, Raul uh, Gomez. I mean, you just keep going down this list. I number know. six, uh, Lauren Healy. Number seven, Lauren was not very happy when he crossed the uh, no, line. He, being being the pole position. And- <sighs> 
man. And and uh, he said the car was running great, and it just had the driveline issue. And he actually yeah. posted, I saw the, the video that was out on the gram here that just recently came out that uh, he actually has GoPro, GoPro footage of where he thought the damage occurred from uh, uh, slamming on a rock. Okay. Bending the, 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 the had a, a pinion uh, protector uh, skid plate there, and yep. it pushed up into the the pinion and the drive shaft uh, a little bit. So, I, he there was some video. I saw some video. I think it was him. On, it was a camera. It was under the, the car. Yeah, yeah, it was under the car. I didn't see. I mean, I don't know if that was the actual. Yeah, that footage. was it. Oh, it was it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I didn't look at it close. But enough. man, that car sounded so good. Ford oh, yeah. powered. Oh yeah. Oh, so good. Ford sponsored. Um, the event it did um, primary sponsor yeah yeah for three years they committed this year and the next two years and uh, did you hear what what the uh, winners get next year the forty four hundred uh, class winners probably a Raptor maybe no they're going to get a brand new Ford Bronco really twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two I hadn't heard that the That's, winner uh, is going to get their their paycheck and keys to a brand new Ford Bronco Ford Bronco how cool which, is that which nobody's seen yet nobody's seen it's there's a lot of mysterious and and doctored up photos out there but the real Ford Bronco has not uh, was saying sometime this spring has not been reviewed yeah so um anyways very cool um so. That's incredible. Uh, that's, Inc- yeah. Incredible. Another another race. So the Josh Blyler, his total time was seven hours, eight minutes, and 32 seconds. Seven hour, eight seconds. S- Great train. Seven hours to go. <laughs> was it 212 miles? 212 miles. That's correct. Yeah. It, over some ridiculous yeah. terrain. More rocks than, than in the in the past. They wanted to ch- make the course harder. Yeah, they added four more rock sections, yeah. new names to trails new that they names, created. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, just super cool. Yep, yep. No, congratulations. That's uh, that's huge. So that was uh, that was the race there. So we were in in Hammertown, and uh, you know, just Hammertown was all a buzz. And then it was uh, time to head back to camp and uh, grab some dinner and finish the final packing stages. And shedding tears at the process. Sucked. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we on we we make a pretty big camp, and yes, I'm sure we can post some pictures of what it looked like and whatnot. But uh, so obviously, a lot goes into setting camp up, which means a lot goes into tearing camp down. It comes down a lot faster though when it you does. start just you don't care you just start throwing stuff. I mean, my camper looked like a bomb went off. <laughs> right everything in there. I mean, it was just everywhere. Well, everything gets repositioned too because you have to hook trailers up. You got to then yeah. you move your camper and then you got to re level it sort of kind of because you know yeah. you, you don't want to sleep. Or so I didn't I didn't sleep very well that night. One, I I was pissed because we were leaving, and and two, there was literally bombs going off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Till. Uh, you know, I woke up sometime around two in the morning. There was a helicopter flew over. And then at like two 45 life flight came in Yeah, and I heard it land near, near Hammertown. So you you didn't hear the story on what happened? No, I don't know. Hmm. Um, but, uh, but the, the bombs and fireworks kept going off till about three, three 30. It quieted down. There were some big explosions, big stuff. I mean, where it makes M eighties, you know, sound like a little, I think the camper moved. Mouse fart. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And um and then so I got up shortly after four o'clock and uh, uh made some coffee and then did some final checks, walk around and then we headed out at five AM. Five AM we hit Boone Road. Damn Boone Road. God damn Boone Road. Damn I hate, fucking Boone, hate Road. fucking Boone Road. <laughs> <laughs> uh so then I uh, hit the pavement and uh boy. Uh, I rolled down my window and I was like a Labrador retriever sticking my head out that window for fresh air. Yep. <laughs> and yep. had fresh air in, in nine days. So. Yep. Nope. <laughs> uh, um, and watched the sunrise. That was super cool when oh, we yeah. were heading oh. out mm-hmm. there and uh, the sun started coming up and that moon, it was a full moon. Yeah, we had the um, sunrise and the sunset, moon set. What they call on. it, the neon moon. I don't know. There's some no. name for it. It wasn't the harvest moon, but no. uh, something. It was huge and bright. And watching the uh, the sun come up uh, on one side, and you look over your other shoulder, and the the moon was going down, and yep. uh, that was pretty cool driving through. It was cool uh, the upper desert there, yep. um, back back to uh, beautiful Bakersfield and uh, Barstow, first. Barstow, yeah, <laughs> Barstow and Bakersfield, and then uh, 
Then on up Highway 5 to NorCal. So um, it was pretty uneventful uh, ride home. A little bit of wind, mm-hmm. uh, but not too be, bad. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm glad we left on Saturday because Sunday was so damn yes, was. windy. Yeah. And it was that way across the state. So uh, I'm glad we got out of there when we did and got home. And it was nice to wake up Sunday morning and be home and go, okay, now start cleaning you start unpacking <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but um yeah so that that was that and then um here we are well into the work week and uh yeah got to got to follow up uh with ultra four jones yes we did who had a great race he did he uh all his hard work and prep paid off and uh the cards were in his favor Yes, they were. Lady Luck was sitting inside his car, and uh, he crossed the finish line within time. Yes, he did. Uh, finished uh, what twenty sixth overall, and then I think uh, I think he said nineteenth now. Nineteenth uh, was uh, the, in his class. In his class, right? But and only thirty eight cars finished. So that's out a, of one hundred and thirty something cars. So. Unbelievably fantastic achievement. So good on him. Uh, technically, his his third race, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ultra Four race, and uh, but he didn't even race at uh, you know nationals. Nationals, um, he broke during uh, practice. during practice. So, <laughs> yeah. oh man, blew his training up. So yeah, reached out to to Kevin there, and I said, hey, we we got to get you back on the podcast. And we had a great time in the camper uh, earlier in the week. Oh yeah, uh, we had it overloaded. The bullshit meter oh. was going off in the the camper. The CO two meter. I figured there were ten people in there, right? It was loaded. Yeah, we. we it's a good thing it was on a Ford uh, chassis because I knew you, were uh, do that. you know I you knew would it. have blown out some airbags or something. Oh, if yeah. you're in the back of your Here we chair. go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, yeah. So we got a chance to talk to him. So uh, let's just roll right into that interview, shall we? All right, let's do it. All right. All right, Chris. We have on the phone with us this evening, Kevin Jones, Ultra Four Jones. The Kevin Jones, the, the Kevin Jones, the, Ultra we can Four say Jones. the with capital T H E Kevin Jones, Ultra Four Jones, car number 518, 4800 Ooh. Legends class that crossed the finish line 26th, but 17th in his class, I, I believe. That's awesome. And Kevin, how the heck are you? I'm doing pretty dang good, guys. How, how was that for an intro? <laughs> That's a little, a little over the top, but I'll take it. That's how we roll here, a wheeling wine and whiskey. <laughs> That's right. So uh, last time we talked, uh, we were on the lake bed, uh, li- having the time of our lives, and uh, uh, you, we, we interviewed you prior to the race on Monday, and uh, car was running good. You were feeling good about the car. You guys were going to do some uh, minor adjustments, uh, wipe it down with a diaper, and uh, get it out to the starting line on Wednesday morning. And then um, we saw you Wednesday evening, uh, excited as holy hell, and uh, with a grin across your face, and uh, you completed the 2020 Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge um, race. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Speechless. Speechless. Still speechless. (laughs) So tell me... Tell me about uh, you know your final prep before the race, and then actual race day. Strapping in to the car, and uh, I gave you a fist pump, um, and you hit the start line, and off you went. So, so walk us through uh, that that Wednesday morning. Yeah, so I think when I saw you guys for the uh, little lake bed interview, I think that was after my first day of pre running, or right. was it after? Yeah, it was. Okay. So the day after that, we we uh, did some pre-running on lap two, which the significance to that was it was my first time ever driving a rock trail at Johnson Valley. Okay. Um, so that was a whole bunch of new for me, but everything went good. We we hit a ton of trails. Car did great. Um, learned a lot from my buddy Chris, who had that uh, 4611 Toyota. He was right. kind of my lead on pre-run. Right, right. We ended up uh, running into Jimmy Jack out there, one of the mod, <laughs> one of the mod class heroes, and and hit some trails with him and uh, compared notes a little bit. And we came down. I think it was Clawhammer or Jack North, and the steering locked up on the car. 
pulled over to check it. No fluid leaks. Belt on. It's cold, but for whatever reason, the car just made me a bit uneasy. So we fired it up. Everything seemed normal. Drove it, drove it back into Hammertown. Hit a couple more trails on the way and pulled pulled right into the PSC booth and asked if they had any ideas of what what was going on. I think they old at that point. They thought maybe I just had some air in the lines and suggested I I lower one of the return lines and raise the fluid level a little bit and thought it would be good. So okay. we did that and went back and got the car ready for the race. And uh, we had tech and contingency the next day. So we did all the little tech checklist stuff, taped up floorboard and uh, the tech contingency line on, on Tuesday. That all went really good. Got everything checked off. They do fire extinguishers, seat belt, nets, cool. all your fire suit, shoes. We had a driver's meeting Tuesday night. They talked about some of the rules, they said anything. Something like, a couple of things I thought were worth noting. Uh, if anything in the canyon walls is fair game, by that, I pass. You could, you could climb up the walls if you wanted to. Yeah, if you wanted to do any of the bypasses on any of the trails, um, as long as they were within the canyon walls, you were, it was fair game. So I thought that was worth, worth noting because when we pre ran, we did see some pretty opportune bypasses that, you know, if you were out trail wheeling with your buddies, you wouldn't take. Great. Right. But make up time and make passes. It, it seems like a good race strategy. So. Did you have any uh, virtual checkpoints, like where you had to go, like you know, stay on the center of the the canyons or anything? Because I know the forty eight hundred class did. Uh, they told us that the only hard checkpoints were going to be the places you obviously had to hit, and then as long as you were, a, you weren't. I think the way they try to capture it is they say short coursing. So as long as you're following the path, you're good. But if, if you happen to cut off a corner and they could probably see that on the tracker, that was going to be a problem. Right. But okay. as long as you were traveling the same path as the line, whether you were, you know, 25, 50 feet left or right, it, it sounds like that's all fair game. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we, we kind of got laughed at in the driver's meeting because I asked how, <laughs> how they wanted uh, my pit crew to get from pit one to pit two. And they said, they said, that's not even possible. Um, don't even try it. Oh, really? Why, why is that? They, for some reason, they thought my crew wanted to drive across the Marine base, which oh, wasn't geez. the intention at all. Right. But they, they said, JT said, there's no possible way they'll get there before you. Um, but we didn't have enough pit support. I mean, we just had, you know, my pickup right. truck and. Chris's truck and, you know, not enough spare parts and tools and tires and fuel to spread everything out. So our plan had been to go from pit one to pit two after, after using pit one three times. Right. So we kind of ignored what they said. And my crew chief had a good idea of how to get there w- without having to get through Hammertown too bad. And cause we were worried about the traffic. If they went back out to the highway from Bessemer, the, uh, Old woman spring sure, sure. come in June road with all the traffic that they would get bound up. So they just they just mobbed through the desert but stayed off the marine base. Okay. Um to get there. And they almost I they said I only beat them to pit two by like five minutes. No way. So and you plan, beat them to pit two. Yeah, but our plan was to skip pit two on the first because we hit it twice in the race. Okay. So our plan was to skip it the first time anyway, because I was gonna have enough fuel. Okay. So I said, if I'm broken, I'll, I'll pull in and wait for you guys. But if if not, I'm just going to blow past it the first time anyway. So we worked we worked some of that stuff out. And then we had kind of a crew chief meeting. We did a pit crew meeting and assigned everybody jobs that night. Loaded the parts truck. And then uh, one of the big ones was we needed to do, uh, we needed to go get race catheters from Rugged Radios. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And neither my co-driver or I had ever used them, and we were both pretty worried because you you hear these horror stories about the catheters falling off in the race, and yeah, pissing in your race suit and stuff. Right. So we were afraid of trying anything new on race day. Glamorous so, side of racing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we we went to Rugged, and they sell them in a two pack. And I said, well, why don't we put one on tonight, and we'll use them around the campfire. <laughs> 
<laughs> just just to build some confidence in okay, these. Okay, yeah, get yeah, yeah, right. Gotcha. And then we'll use the you know the second one on on race day the next okay. morning. So so we both put on race catheters while we finish prepping the car and and drinking beers around the campfire. And uh, man, it is it is the oddest feeling to just <laughs> you know go go walk over to a you know the trailer and just kind of lift your leg a little bit and. <laughs> Uh, but it it definitely gave us the confidence that that they would work that and they would out okay well. wow yeah um as i was walking around the campfire i kept stepping on the straw and it <laughs> you learned you got to like tape it to your leg and oh, uh, <laughs> that's all right i i witnessed uh the name will re- remain unnamed uh but a very famous old uh trophy truck driver walking through hammertown and I saw him step, like I saw the tube hanging out his, his left leg and he stepped on it and it obviously hurt because he stopped dead in his tracks <laughs> and then he readjusted everything. So, uh, so yeah, yeah don't, <laughs> don't feel bad. That's oh, God. oh, that's great. So, um, yeah, that was, that was Tuesday. Went to bed about midnight and I, I actually slept like a baby. Uh, my co-driver said he was no, actually, my, sorry, my crew chief Seth. He said he was up almost all night, just thinking about logistics and panicking and stuff like that. <laughs> right. But um, I I went to bed at midnight and I slept solid until I set my alarm. I think at like five thirty or something wow. like that. Oh, that's good. So yeah, I got a good good solid few hours of sleep. They told us they wanted us in staging at six a.m. for an eight a.m. start time. The, right. the lesson learned that when somebody tells me a time to be somewhere that's when You're i'm going to be there yeah. so i was i was there at 5 50 and it turns out that's a really loose 6 a.m <laughs> right um, everybody you were the only one yeah pretty much wow. so next year i think we'll drag our feet a little bit it was <laughs> it was really cold i had taken a blanket with me and just sat in the car and wrapped myself up uh-huh just to try to stay warm but um Anyway, yeah, next thing we know, we're moving forward at 8 o'clock, and I see you, Jason, there on the side and asked you to flip on my oil cooler. Oh, yeah, switch. that's right. I, I had to flip a yeah, fan switch there for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, really fancy. You know, it's like zip-tied to the hood. Yeah, but, it, was, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Um, and then, yeah, we got the green flag, and our plan was to – we hadn't pre-run – because short course was closed when we were pre run in lap one. So we hadn't seen the short course or like the first mile. Our plan was just to follow the guy we were next to in case there's a big G out or, you know, whatever. Sure. I was like, oh, I'll just take it easy. Well, the green flag drops and I hammer the throttle and, and that guy just disappeared. He was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> so I think our plan lasted about two seconds and um, we just got after it. Sure. Everybody says take it easy the first lap. I, I don't know. I, I thought that, but now personally, I, I think that's a bad idea. I, I think you gotta, I think you gotta just be ready, and then you gotta hammer down and start getting around cars. Sure. So uh, they call it Heartbreak Hill. Was it yeah. race mile five? And there's a, a right line and a left line, and there were two cars stuck at the top in a big dust cloud. We passed a car at the bottom. And when we got to the top, the two cars still hadn't moved. So I crossed lines halfway up the hill and went to the left line and, and passed them all. So, I mean, wow. I think by race mile five, we we're already passing, you know, half a dozen people. So Perfect. I kind of kind of started to get in the zone of like, yeah, you know what? We we know what we're doing. Let's, let's sure. get this done. And then there's a, a sand dune a couple miles later. And there were there were people stuck on the sand dune and they were they were winching. Wow. And and I, I started yelling into the intercom. I was like, are you effing kidding me? These Ultra 4 cars are winching up a sand dune? I'm like, what is wrong with these guys? So, I mean, maybe I, I take it for granted because I drive in the sand I so was going to say, you're right there by Pismo. Yeah. Um, so I just grabbed another gear and put the thing on the floor. And and we passed another four Hammer cars down. going up a sand dune. So, um, That's awesome. After that, we... Yeah, I mean, we were we were feeling it by then. My co-driver was fired up, so we just started clicking off miles and making passes everywhere we could. We had some good lines. There was a really good one between mile 12 and 13, I think, and I think we got the car up to probably 60 or 70 and made a pass, a pretty good pass right through there. Started battling with uh, this 48 
500 car number uh, 4850. I don't know the guy. Um, I got to figure out how to get in touch with him because we battled so much throughout the day. It was, <laughs> it was epic. But uh, got to remote pit one and we had planned out a what we called a 10 second pit. All I was going to do was pull onto the tarp, leave the car running, wiggle the steering wheel back and forth. Everybody was going to do their jobs as far as tire guy was going to look at tires. The front axle guy was going to look at front axle. The rear axle guy was going to check his stuff. And and then we were going to take off again. No fuel, no nothing. For sure. 10-second pit turned into probably more like 20 or 30, but they just wanted to be thorough, so that was cool. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. So we took off from pit and headed to Cougar Buttes, which I was super fired up about because we had pre-ran that and got some really good lines through there. And we got in there, and I told my co-driver, I was like, you ready? You know, And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So um, we got through the snake a little bit, and then this big section that we had figured out how to cut off, we just did it. So we just detoured, started mobbing over the rock. And uh, I, I'm guessing we surprised uh, Travis Riley, Sr.'s co- co-dog, pretty good, a 4,500 car. Um because we came up and over this rock and almost T-boned him in the door. Oh, jeez. Down in the bottom of a canyon. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, we probably popped it right into his window net and waited for him to pass Hello. by. And, yeah, mobbed right by. <laughs> so it was good, though, because, I mean, we were passing. Like, I knew where some of these guys were because I'd studied the qualifying order a little bit. Okay. So we started 85th, and we were already passing cars that had started, you know, in the 60s. So I, I knew we were I knew we were picking off people pretty good. So let me let me stop you there. So at what point, what race mile approximately or whatever, how many minutes into the race did you like settle in and go, OK, we're we we got this, you know, we're dialed, we prepared. I mean, where you kind of got comfortable or into the zone, so to speak, uh, of the race. Yeah, I think it was I think it was probably between heart like Heartbreak Hill sure. at five and then the sand dune after that it was just really obvious to me that we were ready and that a lot of people weren't. Okay. Okay. And, and, and that, that made alone, you feel better. I, that made me feel better <laughs> because I just, I stopped paying attention to the other cars and just started really listening to our car. Right. Um, and as long as we were staying off the bump stops, I just kept driving it, you know, okay. and every, every time we'd strike the bump stops real hard, I'd, I'd like kind of take that as a check and back it off a little bit. Okay, cool. But, but really just tried to keep the car going as fast as it could using all the suspension it could without, you know, beating on the chassis too bad. Sure. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's just when it, I feel like, you know, as you say, we settled in and just started driving our, our race. Yeah, exactly. At, at that point, all the other cars were just in the way. <laughs> Get out. I love it. So did you nerf anybody? Yeah, did you uh, nerf anybody back? <laughs> no, well, yeah, no. We um there was one oh that was something else from the drivers meeting. So JT Taylor said this and I hadn't heard it before, but it made a ton of sense as soon as he said it. He said if somebody catches you, let them by. Okay. Because they've already passed you. You're all racing on corrected time. Okay. So if a, if a car is on your back bumper, they're not behind you. They're 29 seconds ahead of you already. Pull oh. over and let them by. I see. So it made a ton of sense because the only person you should be car to car with is the guy you started on the line with. Makes sense. Sure. Correct. Everybody else is just the clock. So everybody was really good about that. Most people would just get out of our way. Uh, some people probably couldn't hear you, so you'd give them the siren, then they'd get out of the way. This one guy, and I'm kind of glad I don't remember his number, he felt like holding us back was going to help him in oh, some way. Boy. So that one took a lot of work. That was probably race mile 40 or so. I remember kind of being in this sand canyon. Okay. And uh, he was really not moving over, and I had to take a really aggressive line to pass him. And I was kind of worried about hurting the car, but I was just pissed at that point. So Girl, get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. So pulled right back in front of him and hammered down and just kind of moved on with the, the race, you know. But okay. Um, so after you leave Cougar Buttes, there's a lot of long race miles that you never hear about. And I think they're the ones that JT puts in the course just to help build the total course mileage. Okay. So it's the Those, desert, desert stuff? Just desert stuff, yeah. I mean, some of it's smooth, some of it's whooped out, some of it's hard, some of it's soft, but it, they're just miles, you know? You just got to click out, click these miles off. 
we, we got all those done. That's where we started to have the epic battle again with that 4850 uh, Chris Pierce. And then also the Daystar Jeep 4570 John Grounds. At one point, we were three cars wide going 70 miles an hour. Wow. That's cool. And it was epic. We were just swapping positions left and right. The wind was blowing crossways. So it was like clean air for all of us. And we just kept going inside, outside, inside, outside for what felt like three miles. And it was super, super fun. Um, Very cool. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd love to sit down with those guys and reminisce about that. But because um, we're all, I mean, we're again, we're all on our own time, but sure. we were having a blast doing it. I think we all respected each other's, you know, space, so we didn't get too close. Okay, good. But we all used it as motivation to go faster. You know, I would pass Chris Pierce, and then like. 20 seconds later, he'd get motivated and pass me back. And it, it was just really fun. It was wow. really good racing. What do you think I, the top speed you reached in the entire race was? Um, definitely on Emerson Lake Bed. We, we got it up to 85, which is nothing compared to what a lot of guys were doing. Sure, but, but that's still fast. Yeah, my cars, I, I still don't have enough seat time. And, and the engine was really tacked out. And I just, you know, I, I didn't think that making up five or 10 seconds was going to be worth popping the engine or something. So, um, but it did make me think about what I want to do to the car in the future to, you know, help its top speed and stuff like that. High speed handling, put a rocket on it. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Rocket. (laughs) So, uh, let's see, after all the desert miles, we pulled into remote pit one for five gallons. Um, they told me I, they crew chief asked me if I had any complaints as we were coming in. <laughs> and I told him, uh, I told him over the radio, I said, it feels like the car is coming apart. <laughs> okay. It just, well, every, every hear. single part of the car just felt loose. What, what, what's, what's your problem? Uh, everything just seems like it's coming apart. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's I some fuel. Go get like him, tiger. A, yeah. I needed a kind of all inclusive statement. That way everybody could do their job, you know? So. <laughs> Lug, lug nut guy torqued lug nuts, and uh, Chris checked the front axle, and Zach was checking the back, and they ended up finding some loose uh, jam nuts on on our links. Okay. So they they tightened all those up. They found some bolts. We'd marked all our bolts. They found some bolts that had spun a little bit. Sure. So they they spent a little bit of time getting everything tight and making sure it was good. I think you know that was that was key probably for the day's longevity. And then we uh, we took off for main pit. Uh, hit guacamole resolution back door, which we had pre run before, and that worked really well. When I went down back door, though, the hole was a lot bigger at the bottom. The drop was a lot deeper, and all I can all I can really chalk that up to is probably between the day we pre ran it and the race, all the party goers every oh, night yeah. have been trying to go up it, and they've probably been digging it out. Oh yeah, absolutely. So when we dropped into it, I could feel the back tires come off the rock and, and start to endo. And I, I got on the gas pretty hard to pull, to pull it out. And my co-driver didn't really appreciate the spinal compression he got out of that. <laughs> did, <laughs> did you have it in front wheel drive only at that point or did you? Have no, it my whole backdoor thing was uh, I've watched guys go down it in low range, like first gear, and then they go to hit the throttle and they can't build enough Not wheel enough, speed to yeah. pull it out. So I was going down it in high range. So I was in first gear, but high range in the transfer case. Four, four wheel drive. Yeah. That way, when I touched the bottom, if I wanted some wheel speed, I, I certainly had it at my sure. disposal. But because um, you have yeah. the uh, you have the Atlas in there, right? Yeah, I have a two speed Atlas uh, with a three three uh, three to one. Three to one. And, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but you had both the front and rear axle yeah. engaged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we, uh, we rolled through Maine, um, kind of fist bumped each other, shake and bake. Everything was going good. <laughs> shake and bake. Super, super stoked, you know, that we got lap one out of the way. So we hit, um, the first part of lap two, you're actually doing the first 17 race miles over again, back to remote pit one. Okay. All right. Okay. And the only, the only difference this time was it was super rough. I mean, picture 120 race cars <laughs> yeah, just hammering the same race course. Um, so there was a ton more chop. All the whoops were deeper. Everything was looser. Um, just a lot, a lot rougher course. 
Wow. So probably a little little slower going in most of it. Got to remote pit one again. Took took I think five or seven gallons of fuel. They found the same stuff was loose again. They tightened it up. Wow. And we uh, we took off to to two A. Or sorry, they're not calling it two A. Two two B. They said there is no two A this okay. year. Uh, miles 93 through 102 are repeats from the first lap, but they're really fast and fun. That's kind of where we were doing some of that, that battle. And I think those other cars, right. Is that back out towards Emerson or no? Yeah. You're headed out that way. So then, uh, race miles 103 to 117 were all new. And I think race mile 112 to 114 was like Emerson lake bed. And it's so so picturesque out there. I wish we could have like stopped and taken a picture. We did. Oh yeah, we I, were out yeah. there. On, we were out there on Tuesday. <laughs> well, uh, Jason will send you one of the pictures. <laughs> Jason was horsing around in the buggy. Uh, we were there Tuesday, right? Yeah. And uh, he almost rolled the buggy. Almost nice. on, on the lake bed. Nice. Trying. I'm pretty. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty jealous of that. We we just had to appreciate the beauty while we you know drove 80 miles an hour. Yeah, across. exactly. <laughs> right. But it is very cool out there. It is. Yeah. There was one car in front of us and the, just the kind of dust trail coming off the back of him. And it was just, it was so cool. Do you have a chopper behind you at any time or did you see a chopper out there? We saw one, I think it was right before Cougar Buttes. Um, and I had learned something in contingency the day before there was a production company out there selling, uh, filming from a chopper. So if you paid them, I think it was like 600 bucks, they would put some green tape on the roof of your car. Okay. And that was, that was the helicopter's signal. Oh, to get some video helicopter. of you. Okay. Yeah. So we saw it go by, but of course he didn't stick with us because we hadn't paid for that. I you know, see. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. They, they, they nickel and dime you. It's just like Disneyland. Show us the yeah, money. Right? <laughs> yep. Show me the money. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, that's something new. I didn't know that. We're going to have yeah, to get around was... in the buggy with green tape on our roof next year. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bring some fluorescent green duct tape and they'll video. <laughs> well, cool. Hopefully they're smart and they change their tape color. I'm sure, right? they, I'm sure they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so you get off the lake bed, you do some climbing, and then uh, mile 117 is aftershock. Here we go. And that was the first place we got hung up. There's a, a couple decent sized boulders as you, as you get started in that Canyon and the car in front of us got hung up. And then sure enough, right after that, we got hung up, but I just stayed there and, and just kind of played with it a bit. Co-driver offered to get out and I said, nah, let me, let me kind of work through this a little bit. And we, we finally got it. Took a little bit of tire smoke and, you know, a bump, There you go. but we got through it. And then I noticed, you know, the steering was starting to hang up and I, I thought, oh man, here we, here we go again. Um, there's a, there's an off camber bypass and aftershock. I don't know if you guys have seen it or heard about it, but I knew it was there and I hadn't pre-run it. I'd never been on it in anybody else's car. So, I mean, I know it's doable, but I just didn't know how bad it was. So I asked my co-driver, I said, do you want to go for it? And he said, yeah, let's go up and take a look. So we just headed up the two track bypass and got to the off camber section. And he just looked out, he's on the downside and he looks out and he's like, Oh man. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he's like, if this doesn't work, he's like, we're rolling at least twice. And I was like, mean? yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's pretty sketch. Ooh. So I told him, I said, well, here's the deal. I'm going to, I'm going to back up and set up for it a little bit. And then I'm just going to hammer the throttle and hit it like a wall ride. Sure. And so we, we squared up on it one more time. I cranked the wheel right and just mashed the throttle to the floor and we just kind of roostered around it. Um, and it, it worked out. So See, that was like good. Pismo, right? Shooting the it's bowl. Like Pismo, yeah. Just like a, a bowl. Yeah. A sand bowl. <laughs> Perfect. Um, throttle makes everything better. It that, really does. Kind of a, it, it really does. And it's kind of the lesson that, you know, I've learned over life. Throttle when, makes everything when better. When in doubt, throttle out. That's, That's right. what I'm <laughs> So we finished Aftershock, and that's when you hit Remote Pit 2 for the first time. Nobody was there yet, so we just went right by. You start up you start up Fissure Mountain. Right, you do upper, right. upper Sledge. You do Jackhammer. We got through all those. No problem. And then you have to come down uh, idle issues. 
And there's a really, really tight left around a, like a pivot rock on idle issues that we did on pre-run day. And it gave me, it gave me trouble when we were pre-running. Okay. So uh, the steering was already super messed up by that point. So I, I literally said a prayer coming down idle issues, you know, like, please God, let me, let me pull this off and not roll the car down the mountain. Um, and we, we made it. I ended up having to kind of dive off the rock a little bit. I didn't get as squared up as I wanted, but the car stayed upright. Came around the corner to go up Chocolate, and it was wide open. Chocolate Thunder was wide nobody open. There wasn't a, nobody in front of me, oh, so I was super awesome. stoked. We had pre-run all the hard lines. We had pre-run going up the rocks on the right sure. and going around the pivot rock and all that stuff. And I, I knew I could do it if I had to, but I'd much prefer to just take the left line and, and just blow through there. Yeah. Yeah. So we took the sand up the left and squeezed between the two rocks, kind of, kind of lower left. Yep. Yep. And bumped up that one. And then I saw up on the hillside to the left, all, all my coworkers that had come out, they were up on the hillside cheering me on, filming oh, and stuff. Cool. So that, so that was cool. Did you give them a little siren or fist bump or something? I, I might things a little bit more like a, like a panic rev, you know, put it on the rev limiter. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Yeah, a couple couple times that day, I kicked it into neutral and just put it on the rev limiter. Nice. But, cool. <laughs> um, so then we, we headed into Jack North, I think, is the next one, where there was a broken 4500 class Jeep. And if if I didn't already hate Jeeps enough, Uh-oh. like, this, oh, pushed, this pushed me over the limit. In my opinion, etiquette, <laughs> when, when you break down and you plug a trail... As the co-driver, you should be hustling yeah. to help everybody. Else. They they made a big point to talk about Terry Madden and all the work he did in Cougar Buttes when Cameron Steele broke down and how he helped everybody. Sure, right. And like that is the standard, you know. This this co-driver in this Jeep was doing nothing to help anybody. Did he um, even get out? He's out, but he was just standing there. With, Didn't know what uh, to do. Yeah, so. He should have had their sling on the best rock, and he should have been letting all the other co-drivers stay in their cars, and he should have been pulling winch cable to get us all out of there. So there was probably like a six or eight car pile up right there, oh, trying to get wrong. her. Trying he to wasn't get drinking a latte, was he? No, no. <laughs> um, so they looked like they had just broken a lower link, but what was kind of awesome was by the time everybody got through there, they had both quarter panels ripped off the Jeep, the hood was smashed. The passenger window net was like ripped off. Um, everybody was using that Jeep for traction to try to get oh around my them. God, yeah. And it was getting hammered. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they could have avoided all that if they'd have just shown a little, uh, you know, trail etiquette and helped everybody. Yeah. Yeah. A little courtesy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was our first, that was our first winch spot because, okay. um, there was it. You know, with them in the good line, it put everybody else up this big ledge. And we couldn't, you know, we couldn't get up that ledge, especially without steering. So, sure. sure. Um, oh, at the bottom of Jack North was probably one of my favorite parts of the course. There's a bypass that's this kind of canyon ledge on the left. And we, again, we had seen it in pre running. And we got there and we said, oh, here it is. Here's the two track that leaves the rocks. So let's hit the bypass. Well, we pop up on the bypass, and there were like three cars down in the rocks ahead of us, and there were all these spectators lined up on the, the bank looking down into the rocks watching these cars. Well, when we pop up on this two-track, that's where all the spectators had parked their cars. So we just blazed right through all these spectator cars and behind all the spectators, and they all spun around and looked at us like we were probably cheating as we you know blew through their parking lot. But, you know, I just looked at my co-driver, and I said, it's in the canyon walls. It's fair game. That's yeah. right. Exactly. That's right. So we, we got a bunch of cars right there and and kept going. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, after you after you do Jack North, you go down Bender Alley. There was uh there was a vehicle rolled over in, in Bender, so we all had to sit there and wait because they had kind of winch line across the trail and everything. And um, I couldn't really understand how. He, he rolled because he was like facing uphill by the time they righted him and it, i don't know it was just a little odd but mm-hmm. once they rolled him we got going again um wrecking ball was clear we took the bypass instead of the waterfall and then once you go up 
either the bypass or the waterfall at Wrecking Ball, there's a giant rock. And when you go around the right of it, there's a low line and a high line. And I was going to go low line because it's easier. It's a little longer, but it's easier. And there was a car broken in the low line. Okay. So the volunteer up there was motioning me to go high line. And I was like, oh, man, the high line's no good because it's got this giant off-camber drop-off. But I was like, well, we got to do it, you know? So we get up there, get on the high line. Now I'm super off-camber. I can't square up the car. I can't steer it. So I, I told my co-driver, I was like, I think we got to jump it. And <laughs> Jump it? And, and he's like, well, what? You know, and I said, I, I can't turn the car. And if I if I try to drive down it, we're going to roll. Oh my so gosh. I, I said, I think we got to just send it. And so I'm going to send it. So I grabbed the gear and just punched it. And we launched off of this thing. And as soon as the driver's tire made contact with the bottom, it, it just exploded on impact. <sighs> oh, this is, yeah. I like guess oh. is where you were uh, telling us about, yeah. Yeah, and, but the car was still upright. So I was like, oh, man, did we just destroy the front end of the car or what, you know? So I, was, so I put it back into first gear and started driving it forward. And I was like, well, it's still rolling. It's still steering. Nothing's, you know, I hear any other noises. So we started taking off and said, yeah, I think we just got a driver's flat out of that. Not bad. Uh-oh. Got lucky. Not bad. I know. It's better than a roll. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, we talked to uh, the recovery guys that worked that spot like a day or two later, and they said, oh, yeah, that car that you had to get around, he said they had rolled. We were just upright at them, and they were trying to get the car started. And they said, they said like, the cars rolled right there. Wow. So I, I don't know what to you know say, but I think that's part of the pre-run stuff, too. Sure, but, absolutely. Um. Remote pit two at that point was only two miles away, and I told my co-driver, I said, "We'll probably spend more time changing that wheel than, than, you know, if we just drove on it." Okay. I, I felt like the rim was probably already destroyed. It, it was probably the hardest hit I've ever had in my life, oh, wow. just in any regard. So we just drove two miles on that flat to remote pit two, and they changed it out. They were my pit crew was fired up. They were like super NASCAR ready, you know, that guy out <laughs> <in the> deal. <laughs> It, it was cool. They actually got to do something, you know, like pretty substantial. Sure. So, uh, car pulled in. Jack, you know, went under and wheel went up and impacts buzzing the nuts off. And it, it was pretty cool. And you guys, you had communication in car communication with your pits, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Comms were insane. I had just bought like just before we went to Hammers, I bought a telescoping antenna from another race, racer uh, near me, Fabio Mano. And so we had a we had a telescoping antenna and a good base radio at pit and we had really good we had really good comms all day. Oh that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Really really helpful. Right on. Uh, so they, let's see. I told them we had no steering, so they checked the fluid again. And of course it was fine and uh, you know, I said, "Well, was it we overheating kind of or No, it uh I at that point I didn't know. The only yeah. thing I knew and I had learned by then after running all these rock trails was it would only provide power assist above like 4,000 RPM. Oh, geez. So and you're full hydro. And we're full hydro. Yeah. So when it's not steering, it's really not doing anything. Right. <laughs> right. So the car had to be, the car had to be rolling and it also had to be like over 4,000 RPM. Oh, so I, shit. I, by then I developed this strategy of like power braking the car, pre positioning my hands on the steering wheel, like half a turn over, you know, where I wanted it. And then I'd power brake the car real hard, like flash the, the throttle and then yank the steering wheel and we'd get like half a turn. Right. And so we did that for mile after mile of rock trails and did all these little Austin power, you know, U-turn maneuvers. And, <laughs> uh, it, you know, I'm sure that somebody outside or spectators, they were probably like, what is wrong with what these guys? What is this guy doing? You know, like, yeah. What are they doing? But <laughs> I swear I was, I was trying as hard as I could to turn that car. Sure. Making it happen. Making it happen. So it took some more fuel, got the wheel, and then uh, we, you know, we we talked about a little bit. Do we want to change the pump? I had a spare pump, but I said, man, I don't know if it's the pump. The PSC guys didn't think it was. Like maybe the RAM screwed up. Like I rebuilt the RAM, so I was kind of blaming myself for that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the orbital had some junk in it. I, you know, I didn't really know what. Just who what knows? Was yeah. So I thought. My co-driver's like, I don't want to spend an hour changing a pump just to find out it didn't make it better. Sure. He's like, you're you're driving the car. Let's just keep going. And I said, all right, it means you're going to winch, you know. And he's like, yeah. whatever. 
So <laughs> took off from there. You do outer limits and spooners. Uh, we got into outer and uh, I turtled the car, bellied it, whatever you want to call it. And we had to winch off a rock, but otherwise we got through outer limit in, in pretty short order, uh, you know, running it downhill. Got to spooners. There's did a you, bypass. I'm sorry, the- Kevin, did you go up or down? Uh, we limits. go down outer limits. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So then we hang a left and go up spooners and there's a bypass on the right at spooners. Again, it's in the Canyon walls. So we, we jumped on that, took it. Then we got in some more rocks. There was another racer, uh, Michael London and he was, he was bellied up. So we, we winched him backwards off, off that rock. And then we kind of took off together. And then from there on, we were winching like crazy. My co-driver pretty much spent the rest of Spooners out of the car. Wow. We had to, <laughs> we had to let a bunch of cars by because I, I didn't want to ruin anybody else's race. You know, again, that, that kind of racing on the clock thing. So if, yeah. if somebody caught us while we were suffering, I just backed the car up onto the rocks and, and just let them go by. And then uh, I knew if we could make it out of Spooners, we were going to be able to finish because then it's just desert miles. And walk resolution and back door again. So, uh, you know, we got to the top of Spooners, and I, I won't lie, I got a little bit emotional because I, I knew I knew we were going to do it. Awesome. I could, That's see cool. the, I could see the sun was still high enough in the sky, and um, I knew the course ahead of us was nothing we hadn't done already. And, and you knew how much time you had left? Yeah, we actually, we had asked my crew chief earlier, what time is it? And he said, it's time to kick ass or something like that. <laughs> And so now we asked him again, we're like, Hey, we need to know what time it is because if we need to pick it up, we'll pick it up. But if, if we need to keep it in survival mode, we'll do it, you know? And, and he told us it was like four o'clock and we knew our cutoff was going to be like six plus our starting time. Mm -hmm. So we just took it easy because I didn't want to do something stupid and throw it away. Right. Right. Smart. Smart. So. Um, yeah, I was at the top of Spooners waiting for my co-driver and, um, we had comms while he was out of the car cause he had a handheld that he plugged into his helmet. Okay, cool. And, uh, I told him when I got to the top cause neither of us had seen that trail before. And I said, Hey man, I made it out. You know, he's like, okay, cool. And I, I told him, I said, get your ass up here. We got a race to finish. <laughs> so, um, he jumped in the car and, and we took off. Uh, we got bound up in, in guacamole. Because the steering, again, um, I just couldn't, it, it was, the problem all day was a lot of the lines you're taking are so sensitive to tire placement. Uh-huh. And when you, when you can't steer the car and you can't put your driver's side tire in exactly the right spot sure. or you can't keep the passenger here and it slips off a rock, like, you know, you just keep doing that over and over and it, it, it just, you can't turn the car. You know, every time you hit a rock, it spins the steering wheel out of your hands because you've got no power assist. And so we, we got bound up in guac, uh, winch, winched out of there and then i think while we were pulling the winch cable in or something the, the car died oh it just shut off Uh-oh. and i panicked because the car hadn't quit running all day i hadn't skipped a beat at all and my co-driver looks at me and i look at him and i start cranking the engine and it just cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks oh, and i was like crap are you kidding me we are like two miles from the finish oh, this is really hard days well, I had realized, so then I realized I had tried to uh, hit the push to talk button to talk to him. And uh, right next to that is the ignition switch. switch. <laughs> I, I accidentally <laughs> killed the car. Wow. So I flipped the switch back on. The car roared to life. My co-driver like clutched his chest, like, don't do that to me. <laughs> and, <laughs> you tested me? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. So we got back in the car. We ran resolution, back door, short course, and... And cross the finish line. And up on the podium or up on the uh, stage. Uh, Woo-hoo. That's so good. So um, at 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 what point were you like, okay, uh, I mean, you mentioned you felt confident when, uh, when you were at the top of uh, Spooners there. But, I mean, earlier in the day, I mean, everything was working good uh, other than steering. And, but somehow you were managing to drive without full hydro steering which i don't know how you did that because that's it's like trying to turn a uh uh you know uh super hard steering wheel right i mean he that thing his, would uh, not he ate his spinach uh, he ate his spinach <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i kind of chalked it up to you know my co-driver and i too we both grew up 
together doing a lot of the same things. And pretty much every car I've ever owned has had some major deficiency. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been driving junk my whole life. So I, I think you learn to work around certain things. You know, you, you realize like, oh, well, you know, um, the car doesn't have first gear. So I just learned to take off in second or, you know, or whatever. So as soon as I realized it wouldn't turn at idle, my head instantly went to, well, will it turn at red line? You know, and, and <laughs> yeah. so we just started <laughs> doing, uh, right. <laughs> we just started like, how can, what's the workaround to this? You know, cause I, I, I need to get through this. So if I could roll the car, and I could get the RPMs up. I, I could get some motion out of the steering wheel. Right. And so we just we just went with the workaround okay. instead of, and, and the workaround became consistent. It was incredibly inefficient, and you know, really annoying. But but it was the workaround. So I mean, I probably shoot. I probably flashed that converter, you know, five hundred times that oh, afternoon. Easy, yeah. You know, just trying to just mash the. I mean, I would bury the brake pedal to the floor. And then as fast as I could flash the converter, do it and just crank the wheel. Wow. And what's your, what's your, uh, uh, stall on that torque converter? Uh, I am super grateful when I had the transmissions rebuilt after Reno. Um, I told the transmission guys, uh, who's awesome, by the way, Mike Wilms, the all American transmission in Tehachapi. If anybody okay. needs somebody, nice. um, guy totally, totally hooked me up, did it super quick. But I told him, I said, the converter's a little tight. And he said, okay, no problem. We'll cut it apart and uh, we'll raise the stall. You know, he said, how much do you want to raise it? And I said, well, I don't know, like 500 RPM maybe? Because <laughs> when you used to put the car in low range, it would just take off. It would just drive through you the brake. You couldn't even stop even, it. Yeah, even at idle. You, okay. you had, it was everything you had to hold the car still. So I'm really grateful I had him raise the stall on the converter. I don't know what it's at, but it'll sit still at idle in low range now and it, it takes some throttle to get it going. Okay. So that's um, good. Maybe, you know, maybe it's like a 2,500, three grand stall, sure. something like that. Um, but if I hadn't done that, I probably would not have been able to. No way. That. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, you'd be doing, you know, 25 miles an hour trying to, yeah. trying to steer the car. <laughs> yeah. The rocks. So we, uh, we caught up with you in uh hammer town moments after you pulled off the uh the stage, stage there and you were on cloud freaking nine kevin i mean you were cracking open a beer oh, we were too oh hell yeah it was so <laughs> cool the celebration was in full freaking full roar at that point so what was going on with you i mean that was cool well i mean you know the the dark side of of racing is is how expensive it is you know i kind of mentioned that last time yeah and i i'd spent more money than I had literally like rolled into KOH with a ton of credit card debt. Mm. And I'd been neglecting my wife, you know, uh, of a lot of time working on the race car. And if, if I DNF'd KOH, it was just going to be what the hell are you, you doing? Know, three bad things, a, a ton of debt and a wife I've disconnected with and, you know, a DNF. So right to, to get a finish out of it, and to have my wife and my daughters there, um, it, it just meant so much because, you know, there's some things you can't change, but to be able to, to get a finish was really the best outcome I, I could have hoped for. So good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what was, uh, you, you were our last hope because our, our two 4,800 <laughs> drivers went down in our camp and then Arturo was out of the race. You guys were actually pretty close to each other for a while. Okay. Uh, watching the tracker. Right. And then all of a sudden you pulled way ahead and Arturo was not moving. And I go, uh oh, this isn't good, but good for Kevin. And then, yeah, so you were our last horse in the race. So, so it was, it was fun, uh, to celebrate that with you <laughs> in, in, yeah. in Hammertown. Uh, you know, I wish I would have got you going across the finish line, but, uh, we, we got to see you immediately afterwards. And that was, that uh, was really cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. No, it was cool. I was stoked. I was stoked you guys were there and, uh, you know, Mike was there and Tyler and yeah, a bunch of, bunch of people, all my friends and coworkers. Yeah. Pit crew and everybody. So it, it was really cool. It was, it, it was as good a, an outcome as I could have hoped for, you know, given everything that, Heck yeah. that, that day. So. so you did finish 17th in your class, right? It was, uh, I believe it was 19th in class. Oh, 19th oh, in class. Okay. okay. 20, yeah, 26th. No. Six overall, right? So what did what did that pay? Like a uh, hundred and twenty thousand or something <laughs> on the? On the... <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that, that cost about, uh, I don't know. No, 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 we won't talk grand. about what it cost. Not, so, <laughs> so, uh, so what did you do for the rest of the night after, after, uh, all the, the other cars started to pile we, in? We stayed, I don't know what, what point you guys left, but I, I drank every beer that we had right there. Perfect. Um, well, I know some, then, uh, somebody brought in more beers too. Yeah. My, one of my picker guys went back and got more, you know? So. Yeah. We put down a bunch of beers and then decided we should probably go put the car away and before we decide to do something stupid and sure. like take it over to the back door, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went back and, and probably just started telling more stories around the fire and uh, I don't even remember if I ate any food that night or what. Well, I know you pulled into, into our camp at about 1130, uh, that night was to, that Wednesday night. That was Wednesday night. Yeah, you came around. Yeah, I was in. I was ready to keep going, but most most everybody else wanted to call it. So I was yeah. I was my at buddy, back my door. Buddy Monty that I brought up there. Yeah, we were like, well, let's go see if those guys are partying. You know. Yeah, I was still up, but I was getting ready to pull the ripcord, and I'm but I'm glad I, I was able to hang out with you for a few minutes anyway. That was cool. Yeah, because I got yeah, a text. Was... We were at back door, and then we were heading back, and got a text that uh, from from Chris saying, "Oh, Kevin was just here in camp." I'm like, damn it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was all it was all good. It was it was really it, it was everything I could have hoped a, a finish, you know, would be. Um I've been kinda hard on myself because we were doing so much better. Uh I don't know how much better. I probably don't want to know, but no. I mean when the steering faded off, we, we we lost a ton of time. I mean I would say we probably that probably cost us two hours overall. Yeah, but you're 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 lucky that it didn't hundred percent go away right because if yeah. it did you're yep. you we'd have a whole different story here right. this yep. podcast would have yep. ended 20 minutes ago <laughs> exactly. yeah for sure <laughs> so <She gone>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um yeah i mean that that's super cool you know to follow your story uh from when we first chatted um at the stampede to okay i'm getting this car ready for king of the hammers and which is your third third time racing that car exactly. right in the ultra four series yeah i mean technically i didn't even race at reno so maybe it's my second one. right right uh, yeah because yeah. You, you i mean i paid i paid registration fees but i never took a green flag so. right yeah you broke during qualifying there yeah. um or practice at practice uh, practice yeah. at, at uh, reno so um yeah man crazy stuff but uh that's that's racing and uh you know definitely the cards were in your favor that day, and that was so cool to watch. And then you went out and volunteered, uh, turned around and volunteered after that race. Yeah, that's that's been our tradition since I got introduced to this in 2013 by Chris and uh, Monty. Was it would race the EMC day and then volunteer on the Big Boy day. So we we've kind of morphed that into over the years. Well, why not add the Trophy Truck Day too? These last two years. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, we we did a Desert Spectator Area One on Trophy Truck Day, and just to keep people educated and safe off the course. And then on Friday they gave us uh, Full of Hate Recovery. Oh wow! Oh so boy! Lap three, lap three, those guys would come after Wrecking Ball. They'd go down Full of Hate and up Claw Hammer. So I I took the car. Or I, I walked over to PSC and I talked to those guys and I said, Hey, my steering, you know, bound up like. And I, what do you guys think? And they said, well, it's probably the pump. And I said, well, that's funny. The other day, you didn't think it was the pump, but <laughs> that's, uh, that's the pump. so I took the pump off and took it over there and they were nice enough at like eight o'clock at night to tear the pump apart. And sure enough, the thing was just destroyed inside. Wow. What, what destroyed uh, it? Did they say? They, I asked them, I, the two questions I had was, was it debris in the system? Yeah. And they said, no. And they said, was it, and I said, was it something I did? And they said, no. And okay. I, so then my third question was, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Um, and they said, we'll take care of you. So, okay, cool. Uh, I've been in, I've been in contact with PSC since I got home and we're going to, we're going to probably revamp the steering system on the car. I think it's a bit outdated. Do you, so I think, I think they're going to get me caught up with the times. Do you have a filter at all in that, that uh, system? No, and that's part of what they've done over the years to update their their stuff. Is now their reservoirs have a built-in filter. Yeah, mine's one of the oldest ones that okay. that does. So that'll be that'll be part of the revision. Is just cool. getting the car. I'm going to run a more modern pump, and I'm going to run a a reservoir with a filter, and um, hopefully, you know, never have these problems again. So anyway, they um, it, it was trashed inside. And I told them, well, I got a spare pump, and they said. You know, just go ahead and put that on so you can volunteer recovery tomorrow. 
So I threw the spare pump on, and yeah, the car was fine. It steered great. So interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Took it. I mean, the the fluid looks horrible. The fluid looks like a glitter bomb went off. Oh, in I there. bet. Which said, isn't uh, good for your backup pump. You need to send no, both but pumps. No, don't worry about it. Go. He said whatever whatever we got to rebuild or replace, okay. we'll we'll make right with you. So yeah, was, have to flush the system and then off you go. So we, I drove the car all day Friday. Um, mobbed the the desert out past <laughs> pit two. Um, did claw hammer up and down because we had time before the racers got there on lap. Sure, three. you were just having fun then. Just having fun, so I, I took it up and down claw. I took it down full of hate. Um, I gave. I was able to give my crew chief and my dad uh, rides in the cool. car. Oh, there you go. They they both had put in a ton of time leading up to the race and never been in the car. So um, got to take my dad on a rock trail, which uh, I, I think was pretty cool for him. Right on. And race uh, car. <laughs> yeah got to scare my got to scare my crew chief a little bit in the desert and he got out and he's like i'm good <laughs> i've seen it i'm good i'm good i'm like you don't want to do a rock trail and he's like no no i'm good so perfect what what would you say is the hardest trail um that you guys did during the race uh of, of the rock you know all the, the different hammer trails yeah i i think spooners is legit especially yeah. considering we took the bypass and we still had trouble in there. Um, I think, I think if you ran spooners and and didn't take bypasses, I, I think it's a pretty legit trail. It's long and it's got some pretty good rocks. Right, right. But I, I guess it kind of, you know, everything from pre running and racing. A lot of what I saw is just car to car is so different. You know, depending on your wheelbase and sure, just like you know, any, your belly, any yeah, your wheeling. belly height, all that stuff. It, it changes so much. So. Uh, to me, they were all super fun. I mean, going from two days before that, having never driven a rock trail, like out at, out there, you know, I've driven some high Sierra rock trails in my truck and stuff, but uh-huh. um, from having never driven a Johnson Valley rock trail to having driven like 14 of them. I, <laughs> in one afternoon. <laughs> yeah, in one afternoon. To me, they're all my favorite. Um, uh, honestly, the least favorite is is going down back door. It's not technical. Right. And it's not comfortable. I mean, no. the, the, the hit at the bottom is, you know, painful, as sure. my co-driver will attest to. But <laughs> so, you know, I like the more technical stuff where, where you have to use all your skill sets and you got to use your vehicle to the, you know, most of its ability and stuff like that. So, right. yeah, that's so cool. So um, silly question, but I think I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask it. So, uh what what's your racing schedule like for uh 2021 king of the hammers yeah uh koh for sure like okay. without a doubt if if i do nothing else um i'll race king of the hammers every year because it it really like when i said i wanted an ultra four car that's what i envisioned was okay. king of the hammers sure i, I envisioned the endurance race where it's man versus machine man versus the elements just everything you've got how how deep can you dig you know what kind of grit you know, are you made of? So KOH for sure lived up to everything I, I thought it would be. Um, I want to do KOH every year that I'm alive. It's, it's super fun. <laughs> there you go. Cool. I, cool. Highly recommend it. Um, I the short course stuff like like Prairie City right. and Reno. I, if somebody can come up with the money for me to get there, I, I'd probably do it. But to spend my hard earned money to to go do the short course races, I. I don't think that's really my jam. Okay. All right. So, that's fair. fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're going to be, um, the cars, uh, have you washed it yet or anything? Or is no, just- the, <laughs> the deal, I, the deal I made with my wife was I wouldn't even take it out of the trailer until I paid off my credit card. Okay. That's so. a good, that's a good call. <laughs> that's a good call. Yeah. So, uh, Perfect. well, good luck. Good luck with that. Hopefully that happens a uh, short order here, but, uh, yeah, I, I feel your pain. Uh, I yeah. don't even race and, uh, you know, KOH, I, I'm looking at my credit card bill and I'm like, what the hell? Just getting things ready and, well, yeah, it was all booze, you know, well, and then booze for, <laughs> and, and hay and, and feed for Lorenzo. I mean, he took a quite a bit of my budget up, but, uh, damn, yeah, no, you. it's, uh, yeah, but it was all worth it. All worth it. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll turn around and do it again tomorrow. Yep. With Chris's money. Right. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> Kevin, is there any shout outs you want to do? Yeah. Any other shout outs you want to yeah, do for you people? Know, I've got I've got two other things here on my little list and one was takeaways. So okay. whether it's for other racers or people thinking about racing, the the stuff that you know I, I was taking away from the race was we we set aside two days to pre run 
and it totally paid off, but it's not enough. Um, really? my goal, my goal next year is to get there earlier. They, they released the course two days before we got there. So I think my goal next year is to be there the day it's released. That way I can, I can make the most of the pre-running because it's, it's super valuable. For sure. It, you know, it, it, everything we pre-ran, we were way faster than everybody around us and everything we didn't pre-run, we were just shooting from the hip and hoping for the best. And I don't think it's the best way to, to race. So, yeah. um, more pre-running. And then we, we chose not to qualify this year, which you guys talked about previously. Sure. Right. So I, I printed out the, uh, the qualifying results, starting order, and then the finishing order of the EMC day. And I kind of did some race analytics on them. Look at you. Uh, <laughs> Do you the, have a propeller hat on like Chris? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the top, the top 10 finishers all qualified 30th or better. Okay. Interesting. But, yeah. But the top 10 qualifiers didn't even necessarily finish. Wow. Five of the five of the top 10 qualifiers DNF'd, and I think only three of them made the top 10. So my goal for next year is to qualify and qualify in the top 30. Okay. I think, Perfect. I think if you can do that. I think it puts you in a good enough spot to, you know, make whatever passes you need to make and to have a, have a good clean day. Exactly. On the trail. It, it gets you ahead of the, the majority of the pack there, which is, is key. If your car's running good and the cards are in your yep. favor and, uh, lady luck sitting in your car, that that's a huge advantage. Absolutely. But, but yeah. Okay. Well, cool. And then, um, something I hadn't really thought about was when we pre-ran lap one, it was pretty smooth, but by the time we started 85th, and went through there, it was pretty rough. And then by the time we hit it again on lap two, it was really rough. Wow. So I think that that better qualifying position also gives you better track, um, less chop, less whoop, less, you know, silt. So sure. I, I think it's good just to have cleaner terrain because that, that cleaner terrain translates into three, five miles an hour faster or something like that. And that, that all contributes to time. It all adds so, up. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And well, then we had... We had made a really solid pit plan and we stuck to it and we were tempted to deviate from it and take more fuel or to stop more often or this and that. But we over and over said to stick to the plan, to stick to the plan. We've already done all the math. We know what we can get away with. And um, I think that's really important because when the adrenaline's flowing and you're racing and the anxiety builds and you start to talk yourself, you know, in and out of things. I think a really solid pit strategy is really, really important. No doubt about it. And uh, what's the old saying? Uh, a failure to plan is a plan sure to fail. Absolutely. Yep. So, yep. so sure. I mean, you you did a lot of prep. And uh, like you say, <laughs> you started out the race and started passing people left and right. And you're going, okay, we we definitely, this is starting to pay off now and make yeah. you feel comfortable. And I, I think that set your your pace for the day and, and your mindset, right? And like, okay, we, we, we can do this. This is attainable with, with everything that we've done to prep for this race. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it just felt like everything came together. We were, we were ready to do it. So got it done. That's freaking awesome. Very cool, Kevin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's good. You, you didn't end up divorced out of this deal or anything. And, uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's a no. huge win right there. So, uh, so yeah. good, good job. Uh, we're proud of you. Uh, Thank you. Lorenzo's proud of you. And, um, it was fun hanging out with you down there at the lake bed. Uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, the, I think that was a highlight of the trip for me having, uh, having you guys packed in my camper and uh, that's right with the bullshit meter going off uh, left <laughs> yeah right. I I'm a little I'm a little afraid to hear if Mike uses any of that audio he recorded but oh. let's, let's see what happens <laughs> I don't know yeah he did um, he did release the latest uh, podcast where we we're sitting around the campfire at 1 30 in the morning um, and it actually turned out better than I thought because I, I thought it was total garbage but it actually was pretty funny. Okay. Uh, uh, at least I thought it was funny, but yeah, I don't know about the audio in there. I wasn't that was, there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. Chris, Chris was not there. Chris was in in bed. So I was unconscious. So. But uh, yeah. Um. Well, very cool, man. Well, we're definitely going to keep in touch. And uh, thanks for coming on uh, the podcast here. And uh, man, 
What a great story. Absolutely. We uh, we yeah. certainly have enjoyed the opportunity to tell your story. You know, Mike and yeah. Matt talk about from the garage to the trail. I mean, uh, Kevin went from the garage to KOH. That's right. And and kicked ass. <laughs> no exactly offense, Lorenzo. It. That's exactly it. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Well, thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, hopefully uh, work is... Uh, Easy and fair to you for the rest of the night. <laughs> Easy and fair. Yeah, right on. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys so much for your time and and you know making a point to to connect with me. I I feel like you guys are starting to hit the the big leagues with all your interviews and stuff. Oh. So well, appreciate you not not forgetting the little people. <laughs> oh God, no. Oh, we're all we are little people. We're, we, just... we're never going to forget the little people. This has been fun. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just as enjoyable for us. And uh, yeah, it's it's stories like yours and. Uh, you know, Arturo and, and Amber, and uh, it, it's just, it's great. That's that's Absolutely. what it's all about, um, getting getting the inside of, and, and like I say, it's it's the whole story of, you know, you can do this if you want to do it. It's not, it's not this way out there, far out idea. So nope. anybody that's listening yeah. hears your story and goes, hmm, I, can do that. I, I think I want to give this a shot. Well, there, there you go. Is. Yep. Yeah, and anybody that that wants to, please reach out to me on Instagram, Ultra Four Jones. I I answer every message still Perfect. to this day, and if if anybody's got questions about racing or putting a rig together, I, I'd love to help them. That's awesome. See, and that's that's the Ultra Four community right there. Perfect. Everybody's there to help each other. All right. Cool, man. Well, we'll definitely be in touch, and uh, when I'm down in your neck of the woods, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be stopping by. Right see on. If, Thanks, see if guys. the race car's out of the trailer yet to know whether you <laughs> paid off your bills or not. Yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on, man. Right. Thank All you. Right. All right. Good night, we'll guys. see you. Bye bye. So there you have it. First hand experience from Ultra Four Jones on yep. the uh, 4800 class Every Man Challenge, Four Wheel Parts, Every Man Challenge race. Yep. Every Woe Man Challenge. Every <laughs> As ever puts it, uh, so true. But uh, I'll tell you, um, man, it's just uh, incredible. He tells a great story, wow. and to, to to listen to his uh, what he goes through to prep and the research he did, and then the follow up research yeah. that he did. I mean, yeah. that's that's what separates. It really does. Uh, the ones for the, the that show up and just kind of go through the motions versus the ones that that show up and want to win. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, and uh, man, but just it, it just really underscores that uh, anybody can go out there and do this. It's got Absolutely. a few few bucks and some determination, right? Oh yeah, um, and an understanding family, and that yeah, <laughs> and that's what's so cool about this every man and every woe man challenge is that you know there's there's a class uh, from from the stock where where Amber competes to you know this legends class that, that Kevin's. Mm-hmm. Uh, competing in, you know, right. basically retired Ultra Four cars, forty four hundred exactly. cars, um, and it it it's a great opportunity to get get involved with the racing if if you so desire. Exactly, I'm totally fine being a spectator in, <laughs> in the pits and wearing the media vest. Well, yeah, and and obviously uh, we're as we've mentioned, we're really enjoying the opportunity to tell the the stories from the various drivers and teams, and and to have that behind the scenes look of it, and it's it's been been exciting for us too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I can't say this is the wrap up for Koh because I know there's more more stories to be told that we're going to tell, but uh, um, man, what a what a great week by far my my best time. Uh, on the desert during KOH there. Oh, for sure. And uh, I'm already looking forward to 2021. Let's we'll start planning it. <laughs> Let's do I it. I mean, when is it? It's the first week of uh, first February, week of right? February. <laughs> there you go. It's already on the calendar. Let's Perfect. make it happen. Absolutely. So, so back to reality. Oh, God. We Man, really... I know. I know. But um, you you kind of have a funny story. You, <laughs> you went to the DMV this week, which uh, is never a funny no uh, or pleasant experience but you actually had a good time this was yeah so um i'm not going to give the license plate away exactly but uh my wife for my, my christmas part of my christmas present this year we're talking you know christmas a couple, couple months ago uh-huh. but she got me a custom license plate that references the podcast oh so yeah personalized like, plate personalized plate and you order them and then they you know take a while to prison has to build them or whatever they do <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, they finally we finally got the notice that my new plates had arrived, and they were, we were going to pick them up. I had to pick them up at the Tracy DMV, so she made an appointment for me, which okay. was Tuesday of this week. So after work, I uh, jumped in my truck with my old plates from the Jeep and my registration and the little okay, form. Okay, so these are going on the Jeep. They're going on the Jeep, yep. And I drove to the DMV, pretty quiet one in Tracy, no big deal. Walk in, stupid short line to just check in and say, yeah, I'm here. I got an appointment, blah, blah, blah. She's, uh, hey, girl hands me a piece of paper, you know, go to window, or this is your number, A, whatever. Right. And they'll call you. Right, right. You know, it's, they got these monitors on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. been to the DMV in years. Oh, so really? Like, oh, yeah, no. Oh, I, I avoid it like the plague. Yeah, well, yeah. Or coronavirus or something oh, yeah. like that. So, anyway. So finally get called up. It's about five minute wait. I get called up to the window and the guy's, you know, oh, what do you know? So I'm here to get my new, you know, personalized plates. And he's like, oh, cool. You know, and I got a form for him. He's like, all right, all right. And they said, get, gets the plates. And he's like, oh, what podcast do you do? Because you can, it's obvious what, what, <laughs> you know, that's so a what podcast. So what does your plate say? Uh, W3 podcast. But, but how's it spelled out? W? W3. The number three. PD. Yeah. CST. Yeah. There you go. So, nice. And anyway, just like what's on our logo. Just like just like what's on the logo. Yeah. yeah. That's so, legit. So I'm still sitting, you know, the guy's doing his thing, typing away on the keyboard and, you know, making small talk with me. And and he asked, as he asked uh, what podcast, I said, oh, it's Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. And the lady working at the in the station next to him was like, oh, my God, I listened to that podcast. No. <laughs> really? Yeah. No way. I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, I love that show. That's awesome. Wait, I'm like, did we ever make fun of the D- Yeah, I did make fun of the oh, DMV. Oh, yeah. When I was getting yeah, my, yeah. Uh, no, my the DMV's the greatest idea. place in the world oh, now. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Love the DMV. Great. We got listeners there. That's so, awesome. That's exactly. So, How funny is that? I was blown away. I was like, are you kidding? And she's like, no, you're sure. Show's great. Like, so did you like oh. sign autographs or anything? No, or you no get a I get like a. I didn't even have any get out a ticket free deal from no, the DMV or something. No, no, no. free something. No, no nothing. But no, the okay. guy's like, you don't have any whiskey on you right now, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, no. well, yes, I do. <laughs> no. no. So, no, it was cool. I mean, so that yeah, I wish I had had some stickers or something. Yeah, on me, but I didn't. Should, yeah. So anyway, I need to start carrying those around a little bit more frequently. Uh, we're, we're still new at this. Yeah. Still well, that's new pretty at, cool. So yeah, so I, I have them. I, I've installed them on the Jeep. They're they look sharp, man. So I'm stoked. So, now I have so to get we the know, Jeep out on the trail. So yeah, okay. So well, one, we know we have one listener that that uh, listens. Uh, two, <laughs> um, so you're putting these on the Jeep. Yep. On the Barbie Jeep. Yep. The YJ. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, that that we need to just, even if it's just on the trailer getting out to events this year, it needs to, <laughs> it needs to make it out. It needs to make it out of the garage, Chris. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the battery was dead again, but I put the charger on it. It seems to be, it, it came back, so it's 100% oh, right good. now. Oh, so good. I was All afraid right. that so expensive life. Odyssey was a dead duck. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, those are nice batteries, too. Yeah, they're expensive wow. as hell, too. So hopefully it, it's it's not damaged, but uh, yeah. So that's that's my little story there. Um, well, I, I kind of have one that that dovetails into that. Sure, let's go. I was talking to you on the phone the other day, uh, going a whopping two miles an hour in, in traffic in the Bay Area here, <laughs> heading back home. Welcome back to the Bay Area. Yeah, welcome back to the Bay Area, and I'm <laughs> I'm chatting away with you about whatever, and uh, I get lit up behind me. Oh, it's right. Five one five zero popo, red and blue lights flashing. I'm like, what the hell? So, so I'm like in the middle lane, so I got to cross over three lanes to get off to the shoulder, get over the shoulder. Of course, he parts the How red much seat. signal for multiple Yeah, how much signal? <laughs> I don't even know if I put on my signal to be Oh, honest. no. I just, like, what the hell? You weren't, you weren't speeding, were you? No, so that's the funny thing. So I... <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, you, you watch all the cop shows and stuff and they're like, okay, you know, keep your hands on the wheel and you got your, you you know, I had my seatbelt on. Everything was legit. I had my Bluetooth in talking to you. Yep. Yep. Phone was stored away. I mean, everything was legit. And so I roll down the passenger side window. So he comes over and, uh, you know, I go, I go, Hey, I know you didn't pull me over for speeding (laughs) and he kind of got a chuckle and I go, what's, what's up? And he goes, uh. Your registration's expired. Uh-oh. And I go, oh, shit. And so uh, I go, okay, well, I said, this is the company truck, and uh, I'm part owner of the company. 
So I said, uh, let me uh, let me make a phone call. He goes, oh no, I can just you know run the run the numbers and see if you've been paid and all that stuff. So, anyways, long story short, everything came back clean, and he goes, yeah, you're paid, but uh, I need to give you a fix it ticket. I'm like, there well, that's go. that's very nice of you. Got to do his job. Ah, geez. So now I gotta gotta call up one of my cop cutty buddies and get this uh, uh, signed off. But anyway, so that was yeah, it's kind of. I'm like, damn, I haven't been pulled over in a long time. And then it's like, what the heck? Get yeah. pulled over going two miles an hour on a California freeway. Well, that's breaking the speed go. limit around oh, here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was great. <laughs> and just doing their job, I guess. For, well, of course. Making the, making a, making sure the tax dollars are being paid. I wonder if we have paid. any police officers that listen to our podcast. I don't know. We can find if out. If you do, uh, DM me on wheelingwineandwhiskey.com because I got a ticket I need signed off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, oh, <laughs> so here's the other thing. Living in the big city here, I, I went out to dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, Monday night with some old co-workers and um, Sharks game was going on downtown. Oh, yeah, we yeah, eating yeah. at a nice Italian restaurant downtown San Jose. And so uh, I'm like, oh, my God, Sharks game tonight. This is poor planning. We uh-huh. never set this up because there's no parking anywhere near. And this this restaurant was right near Henry's yeah, High Life. Near the Shark Tank. Yeah, uh, Pisano. Uh, Italian restaurant, and I've always wanted to eat there. I've heard great things, but uh, anyways, nope, wasn't getting a parking spot anywhere near there. Nope. I end up parking literally like a mile away. Oh and, boy, and walking, and uh, you know, going under some overpasses uh, with some bums and stuff. I'm carrying mm-hmm. a wine bottle, so I thought, well, at least I got some defense here. No, they drink it. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I was going to get mugged for the for the bottle of wine, but anyways. <laughs> um, so get to the restaurant and, you know, settle in with a cocktail and we have a great time and get caught up. And so getting ready to leave and, you know, they're like, oh, we'll give you a ride. And I'm like, there's all these scooters out front. You know, those Lime scooters. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Download the app. You scan the, the yeah, QR yeah. code. And it's then, like $10 a minute or something. No, no. Uh, it unlocks it and off you go. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so doing this right now. <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, download the app and unlock it. It was like a dollar to unlock it. And then it's like 30 cents a minute or something. Okay. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I get the, you know, and of course it's telling you, you're supposed to have a helmet. Like you carry a helmet around with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going through all the safety things and you know, okay, I acknowledge. All right. So basically you just released full liability there and then you hop on this thing and take off like a bat out of hell. They actually go pretty fast. I mean, this thing, it's got a little speedometer on it and doing like 12 miles an hour. Which is pretty fast for an electric scooter, or at no, least it no felt hel- fast. With no helmet on. With no helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> carrying an empty wine bottle. To fight. No, I didn't have the wine bottle with me. But um, so I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. And I had to, I had to cross some pretty big intersections, you know, uh, busy intersections. But, uh, you know, just blazed on through and <laughs> hit the sidewalks. And they have a little horn, beep, beep, beep. Uh, no, there's I, – well I, – no, I don't think there. There's some sort of horn, but I didn't find the button. Uh, but uh, um, no, it's just like a little thumb throttle, you know, electric, and uh, it got good torques. Probably yeah, more torques than a Toyota. Might. <laughs> Probably. But uh, wow. anyways, I I'm like, oh crap, where did I park? I'm trying to like find my way, you know, back, and I ended up finding my truck. But I I didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep going. I thought about going all the way to my house. Well, I've seen them park down the hill. Yeah, they're, That's they're as far as right they here. go. That's yeah, a, they, they, they're geofenced, you know? Yeah. So they, they won't time. allow them into the park, but, uh, <laughs> but they, yeah. So they, I can get down. Uh, I can't get yeah, to, I can't, yeah. can't so, do it. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. I'm like, man, yeah, I could see. You could have some fun on these things if you get a couple of your buddies and just, oh, you know, yeah. race around uh, downtown with them. But. Well, I saw those things when I was in San Diego last year at this time. I couldn't go to KOH last year because so I had to do some work oh, right, stuff. right, right. And they those stupid scooters are everywhere. Oh, yeah. Hundreds, thousands of them, I guess. I mean, they're, they'd be like, you wake up in the morning, you walk outside, and there'd be you know, 20 or 30 of them all lined up sure. ready to go. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, they're great. Little gremlins so come anyway, out in the middle so of the night you, and set you, them up. <laughs> they think they do, right? And they charge them and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and whatever. Wipe them down. I don't no, know. No. But um, it is. It's a cool thing. Um, I don't know how much longer they're going to last. Just a matter of time before somebody gets hurt, and then they shut that whole operation mm-hmm. down. Oh, but they uh, just get chucked all over the place. They are. They, I've seen them in, in ponds and stuff, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> Interesting. So if you ever get the opportunity, if you're in the big city anywhere and they got those uh, scooters. 30 cents a minute, huh? Something like that, yeah. It cost me like $3.42 or something to Parking to was, what, 80 no, so that was it. I had free parking, so oh. that was the only saving grace because it Winning. was like it was forty dollars. Uh-huh. A couple of lots that I drove by, and I'm like, I'm not paying forty freaking dollars to park to eat right. dinner. No, good call. Sorry, do you validate? No. Okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Moving on. Should have taken Lorenzo with me. No, that would have worked. Could have rode got... him back to the truck. <laughs> I don't think he's in no, any condition. No, he's definitely not in any condition. No, he's, he's definitely <laughs> so not. He's, he's barely having trouble getting around by himself here. He's exactly. Still, yeah. He's been pretty useless as a producer for a I'll while. I'll tell you, so. he was a dirty donkey coming back from uh, from KOH there. He I had to get the air hose out. <laughs> I would have just used my shop uh, shop blower. Oh, yeah. No, I needed, I needed more pressure. Oh, more yeah, torques. Yeah, to get down deep in that fur, man. Oof. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been looking at the uh, at the uh, reviews. We got some shout outs we'd oh, like yeah? to make. We got some new ones? Yeah, we got some new ones. Oh, sweet. Apparently apparently people listen to us and like what they're hearing, so okay. that's kinda cool. So what do you got? Well we got uh, a guy handle here, Dirty Sherpa via Apple Podcast. Uh, I wonder if it's a real Sherpa. Is I don't, that the real I don't Sherpa? know. I don't know. But uh, he says, impressive that Lorenzo puts such amazing episodes together and manages to keep Chris and Jason in check most of the time. Sherpa. Oh, that's definitely a Sherpa. Yeah, for sure. And then we have another one from a 45 Willy, 45 Willies. And he said, uh, what a breath of fresh air and audio enjoyment to listen to. I noticed myself smiling and laughing while listening to you while driving around at work or commute home. Keep up the great work and keep the shows coming. Well, nice. Those are a couple of great shout-outs right 40, there. 45 willies. That's that's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. Breath of fresh air. We needed that last week. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> oh, speaking of willies, you see that you saw that big willies roaring yeah. around down there at KOH? Yeah, that yeah. thing is massive. Well, yeah, your son was in the back of it at, uh, at the back door. That's what, yeah, that's what I heard. So. It was, uh, that thing's badass. Two and a half times the <laughs> replica of a, of a Willie's. We saw that thing, I think, down at SEMA. That yeah? Was, that it's was been cool. all over. Oh, yeah. It's all he over. He goes all over. So, yeah. Ian. Ian's the owner of oh, it. Oh, I've never met the guy. Yeah. So. Mike, Mike knows him. Oh, Mike yeah. knows everybody. Well, Mike knows everybody. So Mike and Max's off-road podcast. Actually, it's Mike and Mike's uh, podcast. If you heard, <laughs> if you heard the, the podcast this uh, this week from them, um, it, it is. I think they call it the the Mike's uh, Shit Show podcast. Mike's Shit Show because he bought he brought out the mics and the recording device around the campfire at like one thirty in the morning, and uh, I was like, "Oh, this this isn't going to end well." No, I, but I it actually it sounded. It. He must have done some good editing because it actually came out better than I thought it was going to be. But I'll have to listen. to We it. were all half in the bag at that point, or fully in the bag. Wow! And uh, having a good time. Where were you? You were I in bed. Asleep. Oh, you were sawing logs. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, Tyler came in, and then of course we had to shut him up because he can talk. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you put a mic in front of him, it just it's, it could go on for hours. Ask Jimmy how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's talking about getting a new host too. There, uh, Tyler. He, he's like signing Jimmy off, like he's not coming back yeah. from Antarctica. Well, he had CJ in there, and then he had CJ you in did there. a wonderful job. He did. CJ's got a great voice. Yeah, he does. He's 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 our backup. He is. He's our, he's our backup. It's probably going to be in here later tonight. You know? Who knows? So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's. Uh, I mean, we're not done talking about KOH, but we're no, definitely talking done talking about it for tonight. I so. think that think that's good. So episode forty, episode 40, forty episodes. <sighs> Who thought in the in the the archives? Just for giggles, we started this almost a year ago. Just for giggles, and look what's happened. Yeah, it was like in May. Yeah, yeah. I was looking back. That was like we did our uh, uh, April was our our teaser right and then may was like our first episode yeah and here we are still going still going wow wow well it's nice that we can't get fired because we we haven't been paid so (laughs) here you go we got that going for us but no if you are enjoying it uh we do enjoy those reviews and we'll give you a shout out on the air yep uh you know uh five star review much appreciated write a review that you that's even better Yep. Uh, to go with that five star review, check us out on uh, Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. Um, we that's on the gram. On the gram, let's let's fire up the gram real quick. Oh uh, yeah, Chris, let's look at because, that. Because uh, things are blowing up. 
Holy crap. 732 followers now. Jeez. Um, and it wasn't 723 when we started the evening? Something like that. Um, the Cody Wagner interview, he posted uh, about that. So that's uh, that's getting us some, some followers. So thank you, Cody. Thank and if you, you haven't listened to that episode, that was uh, 38. 38. Um, it, it's good. I, I actually really just good. finished listening to the edited version today. and uh, America. Yeah, you did a good job with that, and it, it uh, came out great. And I, he, He's awesome. He is. So That's get great. to hear about him and uh, his story and, and Laser Town. So, and flamethrowers. And flamethrowers. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So good. So, uh, yeah, check us out. You've got the gram. Wheelingwineandwhiskey.com is our, our uh, website. And of course, you can email Jason or I, Jason or Chris at wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. That's right. And uh, yeah, love to hear from you. There it is. Whoop, there it is. All, all right. right. Uh, that's all I got. That's it. That's it. That's it. Episode 40, ladies and gentlemen. We're out. <laughs> <laughs>